What's up, everybody? Welcome to Prime Sports Media. I'm your host. Let's get at it right now. I'm very excited about this. It's been a while since I've uploaded. But look, um, I want to say right now before I start this video, because this video primarily is about why Colorado Coach Prime is going to win now. All the naysayers have been doing all their talking, but I'm going to give you some examples of why they can win now. Some things that people haven't really been talking about. And Kurt Herb, Herb Street talked about this in an interview that he did recently about the phenomena of what Coach Prime is doing at Colorado. But first of all, I want to thank everyone out there for supporting this channel. But most of all, I want to say that I'm glad that Coach Prime is having a speedy recovery from uh, some of the blood clots that he's been struggling with in his body and his legs and his growing area. And I want to thank everyone out there that's been giving him well wishes. And what I want to do is I want to show you on this video a, a collage of video clips that reinforce the reason why I believe they're going to win. Just as he says, we're going to win now, not tomorrow, not yesterday. And one of the foundations that I think is very important to understand when it comes to Coach Prime is his dedication to his family and the support that he gets from him. His, fa his family, I mean, you've got Shallow Sanders, okay, Shador Sanders. He has family that are there supporting him. Let me show you this clip right here as we begin this program. Here we go. Hey, family is important. Girl. How are you feeling? Good, where's that? Hey, hey no, dog. Don't no, no, put no. your whole head in the thing, man. Thank you. You can leave do that. I'm here. Charlo, get on the phone. I gotta see your face. <laughs> Doug, you know what I look like, dog. Doug, let me see your face, man, if I palm it. Okay, let me tell you what you have. Let me get you, because you're part of the wheel now. DeAndre, you better get on. You know, dog, you were tripping earlier. Yeah, you, you were tripping earlier. Well, I told them that I had a blood, a big blood cut in my thigh that they got out. Then I had something below my knee that they got out. Then I got one in the right leg that they're going to get soon. How long are you going to be in the hospital? Um, I'll go out tomorrow. I'll tomorrow. When I was in surgery, they told me, I said, Shallow ain't no good. Shallow ain't no good. Shallow ain't no good. <laughs> I just want to give you a BBL. <laughs> <laughs> <Tell> the truth. <laughs> so as you can see, um, you know, he was uh, talking to his family, and they really were joking with him. And I think it's important because of what he's going through or what he had gone through, that they keep it light, that they're talking to their father. There's such a bond that he has with his children there um, and what have you. Now, in this collage that I'm going to be presenting to you today, uh, a week ago I did a, a video where everybody's been talking about this, about Cormati McLean. Where is he? Well, we already know that he is on that campus, just as I had said on my video. Um, Big Dog Chico has said – Life in football, everybody, Dave's talk buff, everybody out there, um, Buffs Daily, all these different channels, we've all have said that he's there, and people have also shown you video evidence like this one right here. The young man has told us, and I'm going to put this up here, right here, just give me one minute here. The young man told us that he's there in his, in his own words, and here's an example of it right here. I'm back with another video today. I'm gonna show you guys my day to day workout plan in Boulder since I've been up there and how I've been progressing in the gym. And yeah, let's get to it. There he is, working out, doing his thing, hitting the bench press. Like I said in my video too, he's he is getting himself ready for the season, getting his body ready. They've got to put more weight on him. Like I had said in the previous video, he's got a basketball type body, very wiry, but he is strong. But they're going to have to put more weight on him, get him a little bit more stronger throughout his body to get him ready for the level of play that he's going to be dealing with in the Pac 12. So, this is what Cromati McLean has been doing. He's been at Colorado, as everybody had already said, to get himself ready for the big leads. There he is with the dumbbells. So the young man is doing the damn thing. And um, this is important because this is just what I had predicted. And just give you another 
uh, taste of his skill set. Check him out right here. <laughs> Y'all <laughs> suck. <laughs> Sit that shit down. That's what I'm talking about, boy. That shit suck. That shit suck. Take that shit back to the All right. As he said, he says it sucks, okay? Um, so that's what he's doing. He's trying to improve himself for the upcoming season, and we're going to see how it all plays out. So we know he's there. Uh, everyone knows this now. People have talked about this. But let me go to the next level here. Uh, this is why in the, in the next step that I'm going here, Coach Prime and Colorado, they're going to win because, once again, it's about attitude reflecting the leadership, and leadership reflects attitude to the players. Coach Prime from day one has been setting the best tone for this program. Now, right here, you're going to see this video. How, I hope to let me know how many of you in the comment section remember this video when he had all the players stand up in a team meeting and name who they are and why they're there. Are they there to win? What do they want to do? Check this out right here. Um, I've got some good video for you here, and here we go. Right now. Well, my grad transfer. Right now. Why you can't? Play. Win. Win. No, no. I bet you won. Bad. Bad. When you came, when you beat me. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to beat my family. Right now. Nah. I'm just going to come in and get some work and play. I ain't trying to play around no more. I'm trying to win some games. I'm here to work, keep my head down, you feel me? Came here to win and get better. Came here to play and make an impact. Shit, I gave up with being a head coach. Thank you. Here. Damn it. Damn here with y'all. Win a damn championship right now. I'm ready to win. 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 Nah. I came to work and win. Playing some. Anybody else? I'm staying here to work and win. I came to dominate. There you go. Anybody dominate. Else? I came for four miles and win. Right now. Right That's win. right. What'd you say? I'm ready to win. Now. There you go. Yes, sir. I love That's it, right. I'm going to be on the visit. I love it. I can't be the best. I came to win. I came to ball out, coach. I came to play now. I'm to win right now. I'll stay the win. We right here, coach. We win. We right here. We're on the play. We right here. We right here. We right here. Tell them what you do. Tell them what you do. I don't miss. I don't think they heard you. Look at them and tell them what you do. Tell them who you are and what you do. I make old field goals from all distance and I don't miss. I got a guy that's beat the court and they left Alan Byrne. Why'd you do that, Coach? To win now. Go dance. Yes, sir. You just missed his belt, right? Yes, sir. Why you in, man? Coach, I came to win. Make an impact on these young men and win. Now. Then it's time you coach me, Shay Shay, right? And then you <laughs> That's how long you've been coaching this man. What? <laughs> Give me your credentials. How, how long you been in this thing? Uh, 27 years, coach. 10 in college, 17 in the NFL. And you played how long? Nine years. In the NFL. Why are you in? All right. There it is. So. How many of you remember that in the beginning of this process at Colorado, he he had all these kids stand up and express to the, to everyone why they're there, what their goals are, and it's about winning, 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 and that's the attitude that you have to have when you're rebuilding a football team. Now, this is a point that I want to make because Kurt Herbstreit made a really good point uh, where he said that he felt that Colorado should be a case study based on what Coach Prime has been able to do in the transfer portal, that he's been very successful in bringing in players, and he's basically revamped the whole roster, which has really never been done in the way that he's been able to do it. Now, people are saying, and there's people that are naysayers out there, I think even Shannon Sharp, when he was on um, The Unexputed with Skip Bayless, said that he feels it's going to take some time for them to have success, that people are going to have to be patient because it's going to take some time. But what people fail to understand is that there's been other coaches who have taken advantage of revamping their rosters, not in the way that Coach Prime has, but there are others. you got Jim Harbaugh. When he took over Michigan, Michigan was in the dumpers. He was able to read two parts of his, of his um, 
of his roster. He was able to bring in some transfers and look at where Michigan football is right now. Now, USC in the Pac-12 has always been the golden team of the Pac-12, the team that wins national championships and gets some of the best recruits in this country, all right? Now, USC was in the doldrums back in 2021. They had a lot of problems. And then they hired Lincoln Raleigh to take over the team, as you see him right here. People forget that Lincoln Raleigh was able to take over the team in 2022, and he changed USC around through bringing players over. Pat Naduce's not happy about it because Pat Naduce, as I said before in the past, I'm laughing at him. Okay, Pat Naduce's not happy because Lincoln Raleigh was able to use a transfer portal to snatch away a top wide receiver. I think it was at Addison that he snatched away from Pitt. Okay, University of Pittsburgh, and Pat Maduce, which was talking, who was talking trash about a uh, coach Prime, was upset really because it's redirected anger because he's losing players to other coaches who know how to will and deal the transfer portal. Now Lincoln Raleigh was able to reshape and rebuild USC, and guess what happened? They had a lot of success a year ago. Okay, they had a lot of success. They did well. So this is the this is the theory. If other coaches in the country like a Lincoln Raleigh, okay, uh, or a Jim Harbaugh, or many other coaches have made some tweaks to their rosters. Not in the way that Coach has Coach Prime has done it, but they've made tweaks. And then the following year that they've made those tweaks, that they went in the following season, should I say, that they go in, they went into, they were able to get their players to jail and they were able to have some success. So in this case, why is it that Coach Prime? could not have success with what he's been able to put together. He's put together some fantastic young men that are dynamic. There's no way that you can, that we can set up here and say that coach prime um, can't win right now, because I'm telling you when this all said and done, they're going to have to do a case study on examining what he did. And I guarantee you, you're going to have other coaches in the country that are going to mimic and try to copy off of what coach prime has done at Colorado, especially if he has success coming out of the gate. Okay. And TCU lost a lot of players to the draft and to senior being seniors. Don't, don't tell me that Colorado can't go in there and upset the apple cart because nobody's expecting them to win against TCU. But you guess what? Bus fans are those of us like myself who believe in it. You believe in it. Yes, they can. Anything is possible because he's got the players to do it. That's the difference. Now, I want you to hear what Kurt Herbstreet said not too long ago. I've got the video on this. Really listen to what he's saying about how he sees Colorado is a case study, a, a program that looks like it could be on. No, not looks like it's on the rise. Let's hear him right now. Era of the transfer portal. I don't know if there's a more fascinating study than Colorado. You know, I remember his first speech when he talked about, you know, the Louis uh, luggage he has coming in and, and he brought it in and he had a lot of guys that, that left. And I, I don't know the exact numbers of the turnover between where they were last year and how many new faces they have this year. But, um, 76 you know, that, that's going to be how many 76 in the portal. Pac-Man said 76 portal. Damn. <laughs> 76 he brought in or yes. left? 76 that he brought in. Well, 60 some had to leave. Yeah. 76 yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's basically, obviously, just a new roster, yeah. you know? And, and if you've seen them play since last time they were good, I think Pat, you and Pac Man were in school, it was the last time they put a competitive team on the field. So it's been any kind of change is probably, probably a good thing. Um, so. But how did you know? You always wonder how's a team like that gel. We saw SC do that with Lincoln Riley, not to that level, but they gelled pretty well. And you know, they, they had a good year. Michigan State a couple years earlier made a lot of changes, so it can happen. But um, I do know, without naming names, I do know that there are a lot of Pac-12 coaches that are anxious to play Colorado. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there are a lot, a lot of people that are excited. I got good news to, for them. To, I got good news for them. I'm ready to play the Pac-12 opponents as well. Yeah, yeah. Fast. the other conferences. I know. I know. <laughs> but I think yeah. that's what makes it so exciting. You know, is is there are a lot of people before you didn't even know Colorado was playing. You know, and and now every week you're going to be like, who who who's Colorado playing this week? You know, so Dude. yeah, I, I I'm I'm very very intrigued to see 
you know, what happens with him, you know, not just this year, uh, but but in the future. And, you know, is Connor, I, I don't know. I, where does Colorado go? There's talk about with all the moves in the Big 12, they could end up in the Big 12, you know, uh, them and Utah. You know, once SC and UCLA leave, there's talk about the Big 12 trying to bring Colorado and, and Utah into, into that region, so into that conference. So we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. All right. Now, I also forgot to bring up the fact that Kurt Herbstreet made a good point. Michigan State also revamped their roster, too. Uh, but like he said, not in the same fashion as Coach Prime. What Coach Prime has done has never been done before in the history of college football, and it should be a case study. It will be a case study, and you will have people that are going to try to mimic what he did. Exactly. Um, let me go on to more video. So listening what Herb Street said there, it, it leans me to believe that Colorado can win football games. This whole notion about, well, they can win now if they execute, they play to their strength, to what they believe. Coach Prime is building the confidence in his players, but he's also got players that fit his system. So it is no, um, no doubt in my mind, the talent that he's put together, that Coach Prime uh, has a formula to win. Uh, even when it comes to walk-on talent, let me show you something. This was at his, uh, when he had walk-on practice camps at Colorado. This is a little clip of what was going on at one of the practice camps. See this guy right here? He's a, I guess he's a wide receiver or a tight end. Looks like a tight end, pretty big. This is a walk-on prospect for Colorado. These are some of the young men who went out there to show their wares and what have you. This is the example of it. And uh, this guy looks like he's like a tight end or something of that nature. Okay? So that's what you got going on. Now, um, Coach Prime has a really great staff around him. Uh, he has, uh, I'm going to pull this video up. He has one of the, I think, roster. He's like a roster coordinator, someone who tries to shape, help shape the roster as well. And he says he's looking for at least two or three defensive linemen walk-ons. Guys that are walk-ons, they have to have good grades to get into the school. And if they show that they can play the game at a high level, hell, they might get a scholarship. You hear what I'm saying? A scholarship. Let's see this right now. I mean, the day in that coaches me, Sal comes to me and says, Coach Prime, I need some walk-on defensive linemen. How many do you need, Coach? I need two walk-on defensive linemen. I'll take three, Coach. Give them the characteristics. The most important things you got to come to want to hunt, to strike, and run your ass to the ball. I can't that's say right. everything he said, but I believe in everything he said. <laughs> hey, uh, how are we going to get at him? How are we going to get him? We're going to put on the screen how we want you to contact us, but we're going to make this happen quickly. Make sure your grades are in order and your grades are sound. Walk on. Remember, we said walk on. Not scholarship. We need walk on defense alignment. That means academically, you've got to be sound to go to this prestigious institution of learning. And dreams will come true. Well, hey, you might, you might mess around and get a scholarship. If you got All right. All right. You might mess around and get a scholarship. Now, these are all the building blocks of why I believe and you should believe. And I think Coach Prime believes, or obviously he believes and his players believe, they can win. He's instilling an attitude. He's instilling confidence. He's motivating. He's instructing. He's guiding and he's mentoring these young men. And he has people like that on his staff that project the same energy. Now, he was talking to this young man about this is, I think, a part of coaching. When you're talking to your players about how the old, when you get to a certain age in life, from your teens to your 20s to your 30s to your 40s, how you have a different change in your mindset. OK, and if you as you heard in the earlier clip that I played right here where the young men were saying, you know, why uh, they're there. Let me play. Some of the young men were speaking up right, right here again. All right, yeah. boom. This is key because that young man right there, who's a defense, who's going to be a hell of a defensive um, end for them. Uh, I think that brother played at Georgia Tech as well. Uh, he said, I'm trying to win games and I'm not trying to play around. That fits into mindset because your mind changes as you get older, you get more, hopefully more mature and you see life in a different way. OK, and this is key because look at what he's going to tell this young man right here. Go right ahead now. You're going to think of a certain way. 
You're not always gonna think the way you think right now. When I was 15 to 20, oh, I was a whole different cat. 20 to 25, a whole different cat, right? Those right. things that used to be important to me, going to the club and shutting it down, ain't important to me no more. I don't know the last time I've been out. <laughs> but it, it seemed far-fetched. Right. But that's what life is. You're gonna evolve. So how you thinking right now is not how you gonna think. But we gonna love you through the process. It took me a while to accept this though. Cool, I know, and you fought through that. Ooh. But we gonna love you through the process yeah. because there's a process. A lot of folks get mad at people going through their process. We had our process too. The same qualities you use now to meet people and all that, you one of the most fun loving guys on the team. Am I right? Yeah. You gonna be that same type of guy in the business world. You got kids yet? No. You want kids? Eventually. When I'm about 30, son. Oh, this good. When you're about 30, son, right? And they get ready to go out there and present themselves to the world. What you gonna say to them if they come with their hair like that? Good? With my hair like this? With their hair like, I'm gonna be like, you daddy did it, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you thought he was gonna be like, you daddy did it, buddy. You ain't gonna say that. You ain't gonna say that. You ain't gonna say that. All right. Um, I like the way Coach Prime gives young men pebbles of wisdom, uh, pebbles of wisdom that they can learn by and progress throughout their life. I think this is very important. Now let me show you a clip. This is all the building blocks to why I believe they can win now. They can win now, there's no doubt, because you gotta look at what he's cooking up there. Here's another scene in a team meeting and you have another one of the coaches who comes into the room. He commands respect from the players and you could tell that they were very focused in this room. Let's go ahead and check this out. Morning, man. Morning. Hey, I say one time, give me one clap. One time. I say two times, give me two claps. Give me two times. Give me two times. One time. Say ball security. Ball security. Ball security. Ball security. Ball security. Ball security is life. It is life. It is the lifeblood of our offensive success. Right, men? Okay? Bottom line is this. We don't turn the ball over. We're going to win a bunch of football games. We turn the ball over. We're going to lose football games. We must value the football. The football is your money. Ball security is job security. Yours and mine. What do players, what do players want more than anything else from a coach, man? Truth. Truth. You want truth, don't you, Charlie? Yes, sir. Okay. What does Coach Lewis as the offensive coordinator, as the head coach of the offense, want from the player? Trust. Trust. Truth and trust. And those two things together will help make us really, really successful, man. Say ball security. Ball security. Say ball security. Ball security. Ball security is life. Ball security is your opportunity, okay, to gain. All right, ball security. I said, say ball security, ball security. What he's saying to them is facts because we know that in football, football is a game of inches. It's a game of strategy. It's a physical as well as a mental, very mental game. And we know that the team that turns the ball over the most stands the least chance of winning. The team that can create turnovers stands a higher chance of winning. So that is a very important value to instill in these players about ball security because that can change the tide of a football game. And him telling these young men that this is the building blocks to why I believe they can win right now because Coach Prime has the right individuals with the right attitude, the right thinking and process to get the job done right now. Okay, now let's go over to the next video clip that I wanna show you. And I thought this was a really cool video clip because when you look at the personnel, you've got a Travis Hunter, 
right? You've got a Shador Sanders. Shallow Sanders is there. You've got a bunch of great players that are on this team that can make some things happen. Not to mention you've got uh, Jimmy Horn Jr., who I think is going to be fantastic. I think he's touted as a uh, potential to be a starter or be, to be penciled as a starter on this football team. And we'll see how it all works itself out. But he is bona fide. And I want to hear you, let you see um, him with a teammate, kind of just expressing himself while you could tell they're in the practice facility. And uh, let's go right ahead here. Wide receiver Jimmy. Jimmy Horn, actually. Z5. Why number five? So I picked up the five. Because I had five since high school. And then I had five in uh, part one of the which is Little League football. But I didn't really have more attention to why I wore it back then, but I just liked number five. And then as I got older, things happened in life. And then I lost five people that really mattered to me in my life and that really afforded to me. So I always had five pride about it. Uh, so how do you feel about getting your number first? Yeah, I feel real but you go. I'm just humble with it. Everybody time coming to it. I ain't really like, I ain't really too happy, but I'm happy. I work for it. everybody that works for it. Everybody still on for me. So at the end of the day, still be snapped from me, so I ain't really taking it for granted, man. I'm just blessed to have it. So, yeah. yeah. All right, fantastic. Now, one of the key things that they said that Jimmy Horn Jr. said there that I thought was really interesting is that he said, I've got to earn my number. Okay. I think that was key because Coach Prime said that he was going to make his players earn their numbers. And I think that's how you build a football team. You make these men, these young men, work for everything that they get. Because when you work for everything that you get, you tend to appreciate things that you work for a hell of a lot more than things that are just thrown at you and given to you. That's why he had to reshape this football team and move some of the players off of this team that he was criticized for because he, there were players on that team who did not want to work to be winners, Did not were not motivated, they were settling for mediocrity, and Coach Prime was just not going to accept that. This is why this is key today in this video that I'm playing for you. Uh, I want to thank you all out there for watching this video. I also want to advertise something for you. It's a link in the description of this video. It's a website. I have a friend of mine who's selling merch and it's called Ben Wagoner. Let me check this out. This is the uh, example of the shirt comes in black, gray, uh, proud Ben Wagoner, Colorado buffs. And it's the buffs buffsbandwagoner.com it's in the description of this video click into it he has a beautiful website he has hats here's an example of hats right here a uh, good quality hat right here good stuff right here um definitely check it out he's got a uh, gear buffalo colorado buffalo gear for children uh black and black and yellow and, and gold colors every color every very nice colors so definitely check that out by hitting the link in the description you'll see the description that that link saying buffsbandwagoners.com check out his website you'll love his merch and things of that nature that he has there and eventually i'm going to get a discount coupon or discount so that you guys can get a discount on the merchandise as well so with that said i want to say thank you for being here supporting this channel as you have this is prime sports media i'm going to get on out here get on out of here but Kurt Herbstreet said one more time that this is interesting that Colorado has put together a roster in a very quick time, turned it over, and God knows what could happen. The era of the transfer portal, they could win. I don't know if there's a more fascinating study than Colorado. You know, I remember his first speech when he talked about you know, the Louis uh, luggage he has coming in, and, and he brought it in. And he had a lot of guys that... <laughs> that left and I, I don't know the exact numbers of the turnover between where they were last year and how many new faces they have this year but um 76 you know that, that's going to be how many 76 in the pool that's pac-man Pac jones 76 that was talking Damn. <laughs> 76 he brought in or yes. left 76 that he brought in well 60 some had to leave yeah 76 yeah. 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 yeah all right i mean it's basically obviously just a new roster yeah. you know boom and if you've seen as uh kurt Herb Street said it's basically a new roster, not the same roster as last year. 
It's actually a better roster. Therefore, I think that they can win, and they can definitely win now. They're going to surprise some people. People are going to eat their crow. And those of you out there that believe in this team, stick with them because I think good things are on the horizon. And Coach Prime is just as uh, excited and motivated to play these Pac-12 teams, these coaches that have already come out and ran off at the mouth saying that they can't wait to play him because you know why they in their minds want to tr- uh, teach him a lesson they in their minds are probably motivated to beat coach prime just because it's coach prime right but they got coach prime's got another thing coming their way and we're going to see it starting in september against tcu i can't wait till the season starts i'm very excited um everybody out there i want to thank you again for supporting this channel y'all take care i'll be back with more more good stuff like this again take care Media, baby. <laughs>